Hello everyone, my name is Councilwoman Jacqueline Gattaletta. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful, beautiful day in our town of Woodcliffe Lake. I woke up this morning thinking how fortunate I am and my family is to live in this town and in Bergen County. We thankfully have not been affected personally by any gun violence, but it happens every day and it happens to the residents not only of our town, but in our state and in our country. And we must put a stop to it. We must protect our residents, our families, our children from, from something that should never be done. We have wonderful representatives here today working to make sure that these efforts will continue and those that have passed on, their names and lives will never be forgotten. Our work is not done, but we are moving in the right direction. It is my pleasure to introduce... Enough to sponsor the silent panic alarm legislation back in 2013. And the bill was put in year after year after year. It was vetoed by the, the governor at that time for a number of reasons, which uh, I don't see very substantial. But the fact is, we persevered. And uh, eventually we responded it and was released, voted in both houses of the legislature. This is all about saving lives, saving the time between when an incident occurs and when the police can get there. It doesn't deter anyone uh, from committing insane acts, but it can save lives in terms of the time required uh, to bring people to the, the police to the scene. Uh, we were fortunate in the state of New Jersey uh, to have Alicia Yakum who came to me and said, why don't we name this piece of legislation after Alyssa? And of course, I learned all the history about what happened to this beautiful girl in Parkland. And of course, I said, yes, it's the right thing to do. And then we were fortunate enough to have a vocational bond issue put before the voters of the state of New Jersey, where there was a number of, there was resources put aside for school security. And then, of course, the governor signed it. So we have a lot of luck along the way, a lot of hard challenges along the way, but hopefully we've arrived at a point where now we have a great congressman from this district who is now picking it up on the national level and expanding uh, Alyssa's law to include other security members, uh, as measures that will be effective in all of the schools in, this, in the country. I couldn't be more delighted and I respect his efforts and I think that what he's doing is absolutely uh, mar a marvel in terms of uh, trying to accomplish something that we did here in the state. He's picking it up and bringing it to our country. Uh, he's a great uh, elected official and I'm very proud to be with him today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thanks to someone. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we have Assistant Commissioner Hassan. Thank you, Assistant Commissioner. Thank you, sir. Greetings, uh, Council President uh, Galileta, Assemblyman Caputo, Bergen County Educational Association President Sue McBride, Mr. and Mrs. Al Hadef, Congressman Gaheimer, thank you for inviting me today course, to this sir. event, sir. Of course, sir. The safety of our children in our schools is of utmost concern to educators. The reason is simple. Children can't learn if they aren't given a safe and secure learning environment. Here in New Jersey, which was just ranked the number two public school system in the country, we've made school safety a priority. We've implemented what has been considered among the most advanced anti-bullying bill rights in the nation. We have some of the most stringent requirements for school drills, requiring one fire drill and one safety drill a month as well. The department has an active, suit, active shooter helping schools implement safety drills. And New Jersey recently implemented a program that is unheard of in most states, developing an academy assigned to help training and resources in every school district in the state of New Jersey. In fact, since the taking office, the Governor Murphy has signed into law half a dozen bills addressing school safety, ranging from doubling the amount of school security in non-public schools and schools, and ensuring law enforcement has blueprint and maps of local schools and on the grounds. And now our most recent efforts are focused on implementing Alyssa's law. The intent in this initiative is to ensure law enforcement is notified as quickly as possible during any life-threatening emergency and ensuring communities have reliable mechanisms to make this happen. The implementation of Alyssa Law is one of, one of part of ongoing efforts. 
making sure we provide our children a safe and secure learning environment. Governor Murphy applauds and supports all, all our efforts, collective work, and the efforts bring Alyssa Law to the federal level. Even though he couldn't be here today, I wanted to take this moment to acknowledge his great work, and I want to thank everybody for inviting us here today. Thank so you. thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, BCA President Sue McBride. Sue, thank you so much. Congressman Gottheimer, thank you for your leadership in Washington on this issue and for having me here. I'm Sue McBride, President of the Bergen County Education Association, and with me today is our local president from Woodcliffe Lake, Julie Ogden, Andy Policastro and Esther Fletcher, my fellow county leaders, Sue Davis from Sussex County, and of course members of our NJEA staff. And to Mr. and Mrs. Alhadef, I am both privileged and humbled to be sharing this platform with you. All of us remain profoundly sorry for the tragic loss of your daughter, Alyssa. NJEA is proud to support this legislation on the federal level as we supported Alyssa's law in the state thanks to Assemblyman Caputo's efforts. As a classroom teacher in Glenrock, I can tell you firsthand, having the ability to hit an alarm can save minutes, which can save lives. Any extra intervening measures or resources that can be provided will make a significant difference in our members' ability to protect the lives of their students and in their own safety. In today's world, when families hand over their children to our school employees in the morning, those school employees are now doing more than just educating them. We nurture them, certainly, but we also face the unforeseeable prospect of having to defend their very lives. I, for one, Congressman, hope that these panic alarms are never used in New Jersey or anywhere throughout the country. Unfortunately, we can only surmise that that will not be the case. So I thank you wholeheartedly, Congressman Gottheimer, on behalf of the nearly 20,000 members of the BCEA for introducing this bill and for having us here today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all for being here today. Uh, I am so grateful to all of you. You know, uh, I know it's hot today, but I think there couldn't be a better time to come together as a community to talk about what steps that we can take. I want to thank Sue uh, and the BCA for your excellent work. Uh, Woodcliffe Lake Council President Jackie, you did excellent, uh, excellent comments as ever. Um, Assemblyman Caputo, thank you so much for your excellent, tireless leadership on this effort um, here in New Jersey, making New Jersey Alyssa's law legislation the law of New Jersey. Police Chief Burns, thank you very much, Chief. Um, for Chief, thank you for your, your efforts and all you do and your team. All law enforcement who are here and first responders, uh, Jerry Falatico, the Emerson Council President, New Jersey Department of Education Assistant Commissioner, who uh, I'm so grateful was here, Woodcliffe Lake Education Association President, Julia Ogden, New Jersey State Police Benevolent Association Vice President for Labor Relations, Michael Freeman, our excellent freeholder, freeholder Zur, our Councilman Gross, and thank you most of all to the Oladefs for being with us today, for being in New Jersey, to your hometown. Um, thank you for coming back and spending time with us and with me. I know that Alyssa spent a lot of time on these fields around here with her friends, which as you've told me before, she loved playing soccer, captain, soccer team number eight, um, which she wore very proudly. We know the facts of the tragedy on that February day. Alyssa and others were robbed way too soon of, of their lives and, and not having more days on soccer fields like this one. We're here today to honor Alyssa and to turn her memory 
and the pain her family and her friends live with and carry every day and turn that into action. We're here to announce legislation, the Alyssa's Legacy Youth in School Safety Act, or Alyssa's Act, to help protect children like Alyssa and all students in the one public place they should feel safest, their schools. On that February day, as we all know, a gunman walked into Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. He opened fire, barbarically killing 17 people, including 14 children that afternoon, injuring 17 others. So many children, a geography teacher, a football coach, the athletic director, so many families into disarray. It was the deadliest shooting in our nation's history. We all rem we remember all the victims and those of every shooting, including those killed in Gilroy, California, only two days ago. And I'm sure you read about just this morning. Just this morning, we lost more in Mississippi. Now, Lori, despite all of her grief that day, if one thing that I think we all remember about you was just how quickly you were able to draw up the courage and go out that day and immediately demand action. You knew this could have and should have been prevented. And the both of you knew that your daughter shouldn't have been taken from you. So Lori and Elan started Make Our Schools Safe, which has become a movement to keep our students and teachers safe. And they began traveling the country making the case. Though once from right here in Woodcliffe Lake and this beautiful community, Lori and Elan now moved to Florida, so they're very used to the heat. So we were just talking about. They both moved to Florida, but have really spent the last 18 months, and I was just saying this to them before, traveling the country, going to community after community, advocating for better, smarter school safety measures, all to protect children and families. On behalf of all of us, we can't thank you enough, both of you. As the father of a daughter and a son, young kids, I, 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 and I'm sure you hear this all the time, I don't know how you muster the strength and how you do it. But you're in charting an entirely new course for all of our children at schools around the nation. And Lori, you know, you then did another unthinkable thing. You ran for the Board of Education in the school. So you'll appreciate that, I did. right? Uh, where she's now, where you're now fighting for change there too. What courage. What the Alada family is doing is something we can and should all get behind. And it's why I'm so honored to be standing here. Earlier this year in February, New Jersey, as you heard, signed legislation into law requiring all New Jersey public schools to install silent panic alarms that can be utilized in an active shooter situation, just like in Parkland. That is New Jersey's Alyssa's Law, and it came together through your excellent hard work, sir, and others. Unfortunately, there wasn't a silent alarm in Parkland. Instead, a loud fire alarm went off, which caused mass confusion. These silent alarms are utilized by schools in the case of an emergency, such as a lockdown or active shooter situation. When activated, the silent alarm remains silent in the building and alert local law enforcement to the emergency via signal or text messaging. Right now, according to the National Center for Education Statistics, only 27% of schools report using silent alarms that are directly connected to local law enforcement. Only 27% of our schools have those silent alarms installed that experts say would help save lives by immediately notifying the police of an active shooter. That number is entirely too low, and that's why we're going to fix this with legislation. It's an essential security component that can truly save lives. While I'm incredibly proud that New Jersey worked together to require silent alarms here in our schools, including now here in Woodcliffe Lake, just months ago, now has them, all schools nationwide need those same protections. So with my good friend, Republican Congresswoman Elise Stefanik from New York, who's been a great champion on these issues, we will be introducing the Alyssa's Legacy Youth and School Safeties Act. Alyssa's, Alyssa's Act, as it's spelled out. 
will be introducing Alyssa's Act in the House of Representatives. And we'll be working to ensure that students and teachers throughout the country are safer. Alyssa's Act brings the same requirements enshrined in New Jersey's Alyssa's Law to all public schools nationwide. That's more than 98,000 public schools. Under our bipartisan legislation, all of the schools that receive federal funding under Title I of the Elementary and Secondary Education Act will be required to install silent alarms to help prevent another Parkland. Our bipartisan legislation goes a step further. It will ensure that every school has access to school resource officers, or SROs, so that schools have a first responder already there, on campus, in the event of a critical situation. These men and women are in many schools right now every day. They're well-trained, current and former law enforcement, with a sworn authority to be deployed by a local police department or agency. They get to know students. They can flag concerning behavior, and students learn to trust them. Many are in schools now and have helped save lives already, like during shootings in Illinois and Maryland last year, which thankfully we didn't read much about because the heroic officers stepped in and stopped the gunmen in their tracks. Currently, grants for school resource officers are available under the COPS program, or the Community Oriented Policing Services program. Studies show that schools with school resource officers have significantly reduced levels of serious violent crimes, including shootings. Investing in school resource officers is simply common sense, as their presence in the halls of our kids' schools is proven to save lives. However, there's no guaranteed or consistent funding stream to bring school resource officers to every school nationwide. This legislation will help change that. As a parent, I know that's something that's important to me, but also to so many parents that I talk about. They want somebody in their schools that can be ready to act, that know the other children, that know what to look for. Our legislation will help cut through the red tape at the federal level to provide for specially designated investment to bring trained school resource officers to all schools without having to meet additional complicated and changing standards from the Department of Justice. Together with silent alarms in every school directly connected to local law enforcement agencies and with school resource officers at more schools around the country, we are taking concrete steps to help further protect our children in school. That is, I know, Lori and Alon's number one priority. They want to protect our children. I'm very proud to be able to introduce Alyssa's act with my friend, Elise Stefanik. She has continuously worked with our colleagues in Congress on bipartisan solutions. These are areas where there's no reason we can't come together. As co-chair of the Problem Starts Caucus, is one of the biggest things I've worked on in a bipartisan way is actually legislation we're able to get through to help ban bump stocks, to strengthen the national instant criminal background check system, and legislation that was signed into law to reform our federal mental health system. We have more work to do. Today is a concrete step. More action has to happen, but it's a key step forward. And it's gonna take us all working together to make it happen in the House, in the Senate, and to get it into law. I'm also a strong supporter of the School Violence Prevention and Mitigation Act led by Congressman Roger Williams and my very good friend and your congressman, who's an excellent leader, Ted Deutsch. He represents Parkland in Broward County, Florida. His bill, which I'm also on, is a bipartisan bill that sets up optional grants that some schools can apply for, for risk assessments and security improvements. Now, let me finish by saying, obviously we can't bring back Alyssa. I just wish we could see her here playing soccer. But the work that's being done now and that must be done can help other parents and other children and help stop, stop tragedies across our country. That's what Alyssa's Act will do. It's why I will work tirelessly to make it happen. I know that I'm going to be blessed to have you by my side, by Ted's side, by all our sides, to get this done and to continue to turn Alyssa's wonderful memory and others we lost into concrete action. In the greatest country in the world, there's no reason we can't end gun violence and ensure that our schools are safe. May God bless your family, our great country, our great state, and Watch over all of us. Thank you, and now I'd like to introduce Alyssa's parents, 
who can speak further. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. My name is Lori al Hadef, and this is my husband, Elon al Hadef. And our daughter was Alyssa al Hadef, <clears throat> who was 14 years old. She was an incredible, beautiful teenager with such zest for life. In a matter of seconds, her life was taken by 10 bullets. I received a text message, shots fired at Stoneman Douglas High School, kids running and jumping the fence. The shooter was in the freshman building. I played the odds in my head. 3,400 students. It could not have been Alyssa. The odds did not protect her that day. And what led to that day would be a multitude of failures at so many different levels. I texted Alyssa and told her to run and hide that help was on the way. Unfortunately, that help did not come fast enough to save the 17 who was murdered and 17 that was injured that day. We know that lives could have been saved that day if help was there faster. The Alyssa Law, which requires every school now in New Jersey to have panic buttons, will execute communication and get law enforcement on the scene faster to take down the threat and EMS to triage the victims. Time equals life. Seconds matter. Hi there, I'm Dr. Elon Aladef. In the wake of our tragedy, we started a nonprofit organization called Make Our Schools Safe, whose sole vision is its namesake. Our mission is to create school safety measures for all schools throughout the country. New Jersey has been the pioneer in passing the Alyssa Law. We thank Lisa Yakuman, New Jersey State Representatives Jamal Holly and Ralph Caputo for their tireless work, and New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy for implementing this simple yet effective school safety measure. Now we would also like to thank Congressman Godheimer for recognizing the importance of this measure and bringing forward the Alyssa Law into a federal bill for all states to implement. At the end of the day, this is a common sense school safety measure. If a bank is getting robbed, a button is pushed and law enforcement gets notified. If a jewelry store is being robbed, a silent panic alarm notifies law enforcement. Are there any more valuable jewels than our kids and teachers in our schools? School shootings are over in six minutes or less, and we need to make sure communication happens as quickly as possible so law enforcement can neutralize the threat. <laughs> My wife and I want to honor Alyssa and that no one ever forgets who she was. Alyssa was a leader, and she would want to be a catalyst for change in our country by getting the Alyssa, bill, Alyssa Law Bill passed this legislative session. Folks, I ask you, will we wait until the next school shooting to do something? Or will we act now to protect our children? Get out there. Contact all your Congress people. Support this Alyssa Law. And let's make our schools safe. Thank you. Um, any questions about Alyssa's law? Yeah. So, so, I know you might say you can't put a price on this, but I've never been to a school board meeting where they're not counting every penny. Is there going to be support? So the, if you receive federal funds, which will be required, it's a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars to install a silent alarm, um, and you know I, I believe that we can get. I believe schools can afford that, and it's critically important to save lives. And then the regular monitoring costs, right? 
Yes, but a lot of them are connected directly to police departments and the chief. You could talk about, I don't want to get into the how it's done. I don't think we want to share that. Um, but there's connectivity, like in this, in this community, directly to law enforcement. Yes. Uh, not yet. Uh, I've reached out to several members of the Senate who seem very interested in this in a bipartisan way, so stay tuned for that. Um, I've not communicated with the White House yet, though, but I'm hopeful that this common sense legislation, which obviously just seems to be the right thing to do to protect our children, uh, uh, that they will approve it, and so will the Senate. Yes. So this bill addresses two specific issues. One, silent alarms, and making sure that every school in the United States is required to have a silent alarm. Um, and the second, th the second act, as I talked about, will be more investment in school resource officers, uh, which right now, um, uh, you know, we hear from so many communities that want to have school resource officers. Uh, the resources are part of the COPS program. They need more resources to be able to put more school resource officers on the school school resource officers on the ground in our schools. How much funding is going to be available for that? So um, as we work out the specifics of the legislation, um, I'll get back to you on the exact number. In fact, I should have that this after. Uh, I should have that this afternoon. Okay. Yes. Is there a standard way that this would be implemented? It's in the main office, or it's there throughout the school, or the school resource officers, or all of the above? I don't know. I would, talk, I would defer to law enforcement in terms of how you normally handle school resource officers. Um, school resource officers. I'm. Which, which, what are you talking about? School I'm just saying in terms of where they where they go in the schools. Are they all around, or is that the same I think that's handled school by school, right? In terms yes. of where you, in terms of where school resource officers are placed. I think it's the design of the school and where law enforcement, I believe, would determine Basically, where it's work best. Continuously with. We basically work continuously with uh, our local school districts, Department of Education, um, and constantly do evaluations of how we can improve all the time. And I think this is something that has to be done continually with all the educators, with all our partners in um, law enforcement, education, and we continually have to constantly upgrade because this is not just a one day thing and every day there's new challenges that face us and we're going to continue to constantly implement new things that we need to do and we're doing it every day as we, as we continually do. Yeah, the, the, the silent alarms are in multiple places, um, and this is where the teachers are instructed that they can go to those locations and do what they need to do. All right? Yes, sir. Yeah, there's a bill. Yes. It's, the, bill will be, the bill will be introduced this week. We have a legislature. I've got to look at exactly we, when we're out of session. There's a specific legislative day that officially can that officially can be introduced. I believe that's Thursday this week, so it'll be introduced this week. Formally introduced this week. So. Um, Anything else? This, as everyone seems to agree, this is a common sense approach. Yeah. You guys want to talk to that because he's been so involved in the sound line? You know, that, <clears throat> that's a great question. We've had school shooting after school shooting. There's so many kids have died. And, you know, that's what I say to our congressmen, to our elected officials. Why are we not getting this done? This makes sense. And this will save lives. How many people need to die before we wake up and make a change? You know, the other, you're, you're, uh, the, go ahead, please. The other thing is, uh, a lot of folks are in denial. Like Alyssa said, it can never happen in Parkland. It can never happen in Woodcliff Lake. It can never happen until it happens, and that's the reality. The other thing is, we all hope that it never gets utilized, like fire extinguishers in a school like AEDs in a school, there's a cost to that, and you hope it never gets utilized. So how do you continue to justify the cost for things that don't get utilized? Well, you don't want those things to be utilized. So there, there's that negative pressure and financial pressure that goes along with it. But to Lori's point, 
are we going to sit still or are we going to keep letting school shootings happening? Are we going to get law enforcement there sooner? That's right. Okay. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks. Thank you.